Hi, everybody. I'm Kelly Anderson. I'm the director of this documentary, My Brooklyn. And um, I'd like to start out by telling you what I think is a pretty amazing statistic. In 2004, the three most profitable shopping districts in all of New York City were Madison Avenue, Fifth Avenue, and Fulton Mall in downtown Brooklyn. For those of you who don't know Fulton Mall, and I guess there's maybe a handful of people who aren't from Brooklyn here, <laughs> maybe, um, this was a shocking fact to a lot of people because for decades Fulton Mall was this very working class, mostly black, sort of ragged around the edges shopping district that was really increasingly out of sync with the surrounding brownstone communities that had become very gentrified. So these are some images of what Fulton Mall looked like in 2004 when we started making our film. Uh, 100,000 people shopped there a day. It was an uh, incredibly uh, rich social hub. You could find a lot of unique products there. There was a lot of cutting edge hip hop, fashion, and music. Um, in fact, there was so much local character that it was really popular with European tourists who were looking for authentic New York City culture and couldn't find it in Manhattan anymore. And um, nevertheless, the city really considered the space to be failed. Um, and they implemented a massive plan to change it in 2004. And now it looks a lot like this. Um, we have a slew of luxury housing towers and a lot of big box chain stores, much more upscale retail, a lot of expensive hotels. I think some of you from out of town are actually staying in one of those uh, expensive hotels. Um, this space might seem nicer, but it's actually very corporate and a lot blander. So um, I worked on this film, My Brooklyn, over six years because it was I was interested in what was happening at Fulton Mall because it was right in my backyard. I had lived in all of these communities in downtown Brooklyn for 25 years. I had seen them change a lot. Um, they'd become really luxury environments. And um, a lot of what I really cared about in Brooklyn, which was you know, racial and economic diversity, neighborhood character, felt like it was disappearing. And I knew that my presence in those neighborhoods was furthering that process. So I wanted to see if I could understand what was happening. I made the film with Allison Dean, who's an urban planner, and one of the things we found out pretty quickly is that people love to talk about gentrification. But the conversation was really stuck in a rut. So on the one hand, you would have people that would be like, you know, stay out of my neighborhood, you're ruining it. On the other hand, you know, who are you to tell me where I can live? And that was usually followed by, you know, your neighborhood was full of crack addicts anyway, so you should be happy that I'm here now. It was really very, very polarized and very individualized, and there was a lot of name calling and, and blaming. And um, the discourse around Fulton Mall was particularly, uh, a particularly good example of this. So this is a, a quote, a bite from someone that we interviewed at the Fort Greene Farmer's Market. I didn't know you could get a Scarface beach towel, but you can, apparently, on the Fulton Street Mall. It's the third most successful shopping area in New York City. Well, you know, McDonald's sells a whole lot of hamburgers, too. That doesn't mean they're any good. So... I would, I would sort of think about it that way. You, you can, they, as they say, you can't polish a turd. OK, so before everybody starts feeling great about themselves because they're not as racist as that guy, he actually, what he's saying was a very common response that we would get from people about, white people, about Fulton Mall. Um, the other thing that people said a lot was this idea that, you know, the city's always changed, it's always going to change, it's natural, you know, you're just being nostalgic if you have a problem with it. And what we found out through the which, a really investigative process of making the film is that the change that happened in downtown Brooklyn was not inevitable and it was not natural at all. Um, so this is a chart that represents the various players involved in the redevelopment of downtown Brooklyn. I can't explain it in the short amount of time that I have, but in a nutshell, it basically shows a very tight collaboration between government and corporations uh, that to redevelop this area. And a, a tiny handful of people made a huge amount of money. In fact, they wrote the plan and gave it to city planning. Um, and so, um, uh, yeah, so basically that's what that shows. The other thing is that they use public policy and they use public money to do it. And the other important thing about this diagram is that there's really very few places, if any, where the public can intervene in this process. One of the tools that was used aggressively in the redevelopment of downtown Brooklyn that we really unpack in the film is zoning. So what they did at Fulton Mall is they upzoned. So instead of building six stories, you could build 30 or 40 stories. And they also changed the uses so that instead of commercial, just commercial, you could also include residential uses. 
And so once they did that, it pretty much guaranteed that small businesses would be displaced, and over 100 were, um, because the rents were suddenly tripling overnight, and also the rezoning increased land value to the point that it really incentivized uh, landlords to evict their tenants so they could amass these big sites for development. So on uh, Willoughby Street, which is just a block off of Fulton Mall, 20 small businesses were given 30-day eviction notices um, because uh, their landlord wanted to sell the, the land to a builder who's now building a 50-story uh, luxury housing tower. So here's the voices of some of those people. Please take notice that you are hereby required to quit, vacate, and surrender possession of the subject premises to the landlord by September 30th, 2007. If we don't get out, LeBose may send a marshal here to put a chain in the door to purpose to, to evict, you know, evict us. What we're being offered is nothing. No, nothing to relocate, nothing to move our equipment, nothing to store our equipment. So um, we're sort of in a bind. Someone has bought this building with a lot, lot, lot of money. Very soon, I think I have to move out to find out some place. I have uh, two kids in college. One is in London School of Economics, and uh, one is in Williams College, second one. I have to support them, you know. For that, I spent like how long? 20 years to build up this business, and now I have to move. Then I might lose all the customers. Okay, so the thing is, this wasn't just happening in Brooklyn. There were over 100 rezonings done under the Bloomberg administration that significantly reshaped the city. Um, and there have been studies done that show that the impact of these rezonings was to increase segregation and inequality in the city. Um, so I just would like to leave you, though, with some better news than all of this. Um, so I wanted to talk about a campaign that we did called My Brooklyn, Our City. After we showed the film, people would always say, like, okay, you've convinced me, what can I do? And I realized that we weren't really sure how to answer that question. So we pulled six or a bunch of organizations together who were doing work on these issues in the city. One of them is Right to the City, who's going to be here tomorrow. And we came up with this program, My Brooklyn, Our City. We basically created a facilitator guide that outlined policy tools that have been used to get more equitable development, examples where they've been used, and questions that would guide people towards figuring out some local action in their community. And then we gave away the film for free to anybody who could agree to get six people or more in a room to screen it. And the response was unbelievable. I mean, within days of putting um, the announcement out, 50 people had signed up to do these screenings. So they happened all over the city last summer. Some of them were smallish house parties. In Bedford-Stuyvesant, someone I don't even know pulled 200 people together in a cafe. So all of a sudden, you had people just running with the film, taking ownership over this conversation, talking to their neighbors, talking about what they value in their neighborhoods, and trying to figure out a way to get to what they want for their own communities. So, um, Thank you very much, and that's it.